It was really fun to explore the mythology elements of Shazam Fury of the Gods in a way we've never seen before. The villains in this movie are not just super villains, they are goddesses with godlike powers that are nearly unstoppable. Ultimately, we landed on mythological figures who are not from the comic books. When I was originally cast, a lot of people online were talking about whether or not we were going to be the three faces of evil in Greek mythology. Now we can plant the seed and restore our realm. Oh, we planted in their realm. We kind of are. We're just three separate entities now. Atlas had three daughters. Calypso, Hespera, and Thea. It's a combination, obviously, of the real Greek mythology, but bound in with all of those mythological ideas. Greek mythology is throughout a lot of DC DNA, I think, because uh, I've got so much Greek god and demigod and titan blood literally in me as Shazam, and this is a world we play in, it would only make sense having Wonder Woman tied into Greek mythology. Wonder Woman was in the script from day one. I was very excited about it, but I was like, are we really going to get Gal Gadot to do this? <laughs> and I didn't really believe it until we were actually shooting it. You brought this world back to life. Maybe this time gods and humans can learn to live in peace. It felt so right for this movie because she is a god. Her father is Zeus, which is one of the powers that Shazam has gotten. The wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, stamina of Atlas, power of Zeus, courage of Achilles, speed of Mercury. Whoa, guys, look, this is what the name means, which is way cooler than what I thought it was, which is just a bunch of hot garbage, so. We got to play around with a lot of mythological creatures in this movie. We have harpies and minotaurs and cyclops and all these monsters running amok in real world Philadelphia. You have this dragon guarding the tree of life because the tree of life has these golden apples that are the seeds of life. Rise from the pit! Dragon, Laden, who I like to say was my childhood pet who turned against me, was really freaking cool. We made him out of wood, which might seem a little strange, but he is a part of the tree of life. So it made sense to have him be made of wood, and it, it, it makes for a very unique dragon. Its scales are more reminiscent of bark, so it has kind of a wooden texture. Its wings are sort of like a leafy membrane rather than a, sort of a skin membrane. It has a blue glow to it, which will help tie the, uh, the magic of the Tree of Life and uh, the uh, Staff of Atlas and show this uh, kind of magic from the God Realm. Although he can breathe magical fire, his real power is the power of fear. Designing the look of like creatures is one of the really fun things. And it was fun to do little homages there. I'm a big fan of Ray Harryhausen and his stop motion work. And we have a Cyclops in here that's sort of an homage to his classic Cyclops. And we have evil, sort of angry unicorns. Within the mythology of Shazam 2, it's supposed to be the most fearsome of all the creatures. When the Shazam family find the nest of the unicorns, its best analogy would be sort of the nest of eggs from aliens. So something kind of uh, slimy, creepy, a little bit alien and unknown. Hello. They're big, they're black, and the horn they have is something they use to, like, impale monsters. You've never seen unicorns like this. They did a great job of mining fable and then being able to curate it and shape it to fit into our world and universe. It's really fun to play with people's expectations of mythological elements. And I really love doing something unique for this movie.